Hello dear friends peace be with you Music expresses that which cannot be said and on which it is impossible to be silent said the famous French poet Victor Hugo My name is Joseph Dinesh and I am the founder of the Song on Fire Catholic Ministries The Catholic charismatic renewal brought in a new vigor a new style and a new way of expression to the Catholic praise and worship all over the world In India the Catholic retreat centers gladly adapted this into their retreat formats to make the experience more lively and engaging The well-known Divine Retreat Center in Chalakudi, Kerala became the heart of the renewal in the 90s. The new style of praise and worship, manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and powerful preaching revived the fervor among the Catholic faithful. Most of the Indian Catholics would have visited the Divine Retreat Center at some point in their life. It was during this time the Catholic praise and worship was enhanced by a wonderful couple actively ministering in divine The Indian Catholic fraternity was captivated with their soothing harmony, soulful melody and their life of testimony. People from all over India thronged to hear them sing. Every Catholic household had a copy of their albums. Their songs were widely sung among the charismatic circles. It was almost like the Beatles revolution. I know by now you would have guessed whom I'm talking about. It is none other than the famous Catholic couple in India, Glenn and Teresa. Some of you might know Glenn as one of the lead singers of the famous band 1380. It was in midst of that fame, money and acknowledgement that God chose to speak to his heart. God used the great saint of India, St Mother Teresa of Calcutta to intervene. All that the saint told to Glenn was sing for God's glory. As on date, Glenn and Teresa have been ministering as a couple for the past 22 years in divine. Their life has inspired millions around the world and their music has transformed many souls. It was during the shooting of this interview that I got to know them personally. I was quite overwhelmed at their intellectual depth, their absolute willingness to serve and their unparalleled commitment to God's work. They are two people who know exactly why they were born into this world. I could sense that transcending peace. They know exactly what they are doing and why they are doing it. As Saint Catherine of Siena would say, "Be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire." It was my great honor and privilege to have had the opportunity to interview them. So please join me as I explore the melody, the symphony, and the orchestration of Glenn and Teresa's life. God bless you. So Glenn Teresa thank you so much for doing this interview you know when i told that i'm going to do the interview with you a lot of people were so excited and i'm sure most of them would give would have given their right arm to do this interview with you so thank you so much i actually did a lot of research um when i wanted to interview you but um if you could set the context for the interview glen maybe you can introduce both of you and what you do right now just to set the context okay uh, basically um uh I'm Glenn Larive. We have a French name. Okay. So um, we got married in 2006. Uh, uh, sir, 1996. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, 2006. Okay. 1996. Okay. Okay. And don't uh, edit that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't edit it. <laughs> That's fun because the husband's family yeah. are not meant to know. Yeah, yeah. No, no, edit it. You're not no. meant to know no, no, when I, you got I'll married. No, no, I'll tell you. No, she is joking. So we got married in 1996, yeah. and Teresa basically doesn't uh, have a, much of a uh, background where music is concerned. Mm. But the moment we got married, mm. uh, she realized that she had to sing, and so the next day she was on stage with me. Mm. So how long have you been in Divine Glen? Uh, I have been practically this is the 25th year. Mm. Oh. 25th year. Yes. Oh, that's good. Awesome. So Teresa, I know that you are from Jharkhand, and I have actually been to Bihar to do okay. some work. So I know how you know Jharkhand is. So how was your you know Catholic upbringing? How was your childhood? If you give you know briefly explain. Um, like I was part of this Catholic school which had uh, a church just next to it, and we were. with sisters and priests and that was our world okay and um and they, you also had wonderful parents you know very strong yes, catholic yes, family yes um, yes yes parents who prayed and so you know mm. it it was more like i would say like a sponge mm. just put into a catholic environment mm. and i thought i found myself so fortunate for that mm. i could see around just my neighbor would worship the cow mm. 
the cow was worshipped right beside my um, doorsteps. The cow was worshipped. Yeah. Remember, the cow's name was Rani. The cow was worshipped, <laughs> and the the next door neighbor used to worship the sun and the peepal tree, mm. and um, you know. And I'm like, hey, I know something that maybe they need to know. Mm. And I grew up with that. They need to know. Mm. People need to know. And did you have any siblings? Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I have two elder sisters. Okay. Yeah. And what about you, Glenn? How was your Catholic upbringing? Would you say it was a strong formation that you had as a child? Actually, born as a Catholic, mm. uh, the Catholic values were there. Mm. So we used to go to church on Sundays, knowing mm. it's a mortal sin if we don't go. Mm -hmm. Basically, it was not a journey of faith. Mm. It was just a traditional Catholic, Catholic. yeah, mm. family. But we used to pray every night, mm. and we were taught to pray, involved in the rosary mm. every evening. So basically, that was as how much Catholic I was, mm. going to church on Sundays and saying mm. the family rosary. Occasionally, when I need, I pray. Mm. <laughs> I look up to God for needs. Mm. Basically, yeah. Something. I'm going to ask you about your band band experience before you came to Divine. So I know, uh, there was somebody who asked asked me to ask you this question. Like when you were having that fame, the money, the acknowledgement of the whole world, and you were actually doing something which you loved, which was music, going around India and singing. Was were you fully satisfied at your heart and your heart level, or was there still vacuum and you were earning for something? There was always a search in me, mm. and um, the search continues also mm. even today. Mm. But the search is in Jesus. Mm. I, I found Jesus mm. in that search, and that was what made all the difference. Mm. I knew what I was searching for, but mm. even after I met Jesus, mm. even today, I'm still searching for. Uh, now you know what you're searching for. Yes, no, no, you... correct, correct. Yeah. I'm searching myself too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Teresa, since you come from that strong uh, family, uh, would you say that you know you always had an uh, inclination to be of service to the kingdom of God? Was that ingrained in you? So perhaps it would be more like a fish <laughs> that first uh, you know floats the surface, swims on the surface, and then it goes deeper. Yeah. And um, and the more deep it goes, the more deeper it wants to go. Mm. So I would say. It's like that. Like when you pray, mm. the more you pray, the more um, more you would want to pray. Yeah. So it was that, you know. Uh, it was always an attraction mm. that that led me deeper and deeper. A scent that you know wouldn't let go of you. Mm. So you know, sometimes when you come from a, such a strong Catholic family, you know, the personal encounter is not as transformative as it is for people who have led a bad life and then right. they have yeah. the encounter. So yeah. how was it for you? Did you? When did you personalize your Catholic faith? Um. I think it would be just by uh, the change of um, attitudes. Mm. It, it would be just by um, admiring people who live the faith mm. and uh, people who've um, to make out the difference, the stark difference between people who've had the faith. You know mm. how in time they've um, they've become gentle. You know the fruit of the spirit. Basically, I so could that, see it. Okay. That's what caught me. Okay. And said, okay, if this can make you a gentler person, if it can in a world that was like maybe like wolves. Yeah. They said Jharkhand is perhaps the most uh, dangerous places yeah, to be yeah, in. I, I then I mentioned it. Mean, yeah. So then you can see the contrast. And you say, hey, this is mm. where I want to be. So when did you actually come? You were how long were you in Jargon and when did you come to? Um, I came uh, to. I, I was. Um, I just came for my college studies. Okay. Still plus two, I was in Jharkhand. In just came for my college studies. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Glenn, you know, uh, mm -hmm. could you share about the journey that you had with your uh, band, and then we will talk about the experience that you had with Mother Teresa. Yeah, music somehow was always a part of my life. Mm. My father used to sing in, when we get together. So okay. my sisters used to sing. So basically, the interest to sing was always there. Mm. Music was a part of my life. Mm. But when we were in school, that mm. is when I was invited to sing for a group. Then when that's when music became more serious. Mm. So I used to learn. We used to learn the popular songs, mm. sing for some social gatherings, club functions. Mm. From there. Then the group wound up because my friends had to go for higher studies. Mm. In college, we formed another group with my neighbors mm. called Stocks. Mm. Then another group, Power Strip, also mm. in college. Mm. So nothing lasted. Mm. Then over these times that I was singing, mm. there were people also I was involved with who were great musicians. Mm. I enjoyed listening to them. Mm. In the process, I got invited to sing for 13 AD. Mm. Uh, Which was an existing band, or you formed? Uh, no, it uh, was an existing band. Thirteen okay. Eighty was a well-known mm. uh, rock, very gr talented group. I used to used to go for their concerts, and so I couldn't believe it when I was called yeah. to sing for them. Yeah. 
So that is when I had to take music more seriously. Uh, so you trained yourself? Uh, no training has gone into that, mm. uh, the way training should go. Mm. But we used to listen to people singing mm. and imitate them, mm. get their styles. Mm. So basically that was all the training I had. Mm. And what happened when you all as a band went to meet the great saint of India, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta? I wanted to know like, you know, what happened? What touched you so much that you would uh, let go of everything and... Like I said, the search was there. Mm. So many people also added to that, me finding what I was looking for. Yeah. One was Mother Teresa. Okay. Uh, we are all touched by uh, um, acts of love. Mm. So when we went to Calcutta, Usha Udup, mm. uh, who was very close to Mother Teresa, she used to help her also mm. uh, with some concerts, maybe fundraising program. So she said, um, would you like to see Mother Teresa? We said, wow. Mm. So she takes us mm. and then we go there and Mother Teresa is praying. Mm. But in the process, we wait for her and it was worth it yeah. because she came out and she was full of love, full mm. of joy. She's come from prayer mm. and she sees us and she recognizes mm. um, yeah, something good in us. And mm. so she says, I'm so happy to see you. Yeah. So it's a very positive uh, reaction from her that sparked of love in me also to do something for the Lord mm. and she also gave me a strong message sing for the glory of God mm. don't sing for your own glory mm. and at that time also we were watching gospel music okay. heavy metal gospel rock gospel rock mm. so that stirred my heart I must do something better than what I do mm. something for God mm. that was my deepest interest at that time and uh, Teresa the, another most asked you know, people wanted me to ask you this, you know, none of them, you know, most of them don't know the story, like how you met, where did you meet, how did it all happen? So if you could briefly share how both of you met and how eventually it ended up in the sacrament of marriage. So I had uh, four jobs, like working in a five-star hotel and working as a, in a timeshare um, place and four different jobs. Yeah. And all these places, you know, I met people who came and came up to me and said, people I knew kind of thing, came up to me and said, uh, you know, um, do you mind getting married to someone outside your community? Oh. And uh, I ended up in saying, well, I don't mind. Who is it? Mm -hmm. And that person would always say Glenn. Seriously? You know, actually, he was famous in town and I'm like, I'm just a person come from Jharkhand. Uh -huh. So nobody knew me. I was like a stranger in town. Mm -hmm. But him, they knew. I was, and we were strangers. So how would even someone connect, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. So we're basically from different communities. And the enough and more boys in my community is being in Kerala. Okay. So um, all these four people. And I didn't join the dots. Mm. And I'm like, well, that's what they're thinking. That's what they're thinking. And finally, we go for the prayer meeting that he conducts. Mm. It was on a Saturday at that, mm. at that uh, time. Mm. And myself and my sister, we are climbing up the stairs. And this lady is coming down. Mm. She's looking at us. She's a complete stranger. And she's asking me, though I'm with my elder sister, so do you mind getting married to someone outside your community? There goes. Uh -huh. And I'm like, uh, you know, I didn't ask her who it is. And she had Glenn in mind. So oh. she finally brought Glenn's mother to my parents. And my parents very, you know, um, very gently and firmly, you know, they, they, they say a no. Mm. And, um, and then but then in their prayer meeting, they're getting messages that the marriage will be fixed on December 24th. Wow. And the girl you get, going to get married will come to your doorsteps mm. and they get initials. So my name is Teresa, of course. My dad's name is Christopher. Uh -huh. and my family name is Arakal. Okay. So TCA. So they got the, in, the, you know, the initials also. And uh, so it happened that we joined the choir. So for one of the choir practices, he couldn't come to church. So we all, before the marriage, right? We all are coming to his house. Okay. So that for prophecy. Uh -huh. And on December 24th, mm. he normally calls all the people to his house for, you know, mm, just get cake together. and get together. Mm. And it so happened that we were part of the choir. So we were called and my parents were in church. So they were also, you know, pulled in. Mm -hmm. And the parish priest happened to come. And someone asked my dad, Uncle, it's a nice day. Why don't you say yes? Meaning to say, you know. Mm. And uh, my dad smiled. And the decision was solemnized by the priest. Wow. So that was on December 24th. Oh. So, yeah. But you were okay with Glenn? Yeah. Because, um, so when I prayed, um, I, w I was getting this... Um, in fact, I was in my office mm -hmm. and when Glenn had called me in my office once uh, and um, I noted the time, mm -hmm. it was December 1st, it was uh, 1 o'clock mm -hmm. and for some reason I noted it in my diary as if it would be momentous. I normally don't note things like that and that happened to be momentous because we met out for lunch, was it here lunch? Yeah. 
Oh. And that's when he proposed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish something like that happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Glenn, you know, I wanted to ask you this. Um, so, when Mother Teresa said, sing for God's glory, you could yes. have still decided to sing secular and still could have, you know, come on weekends. I was still singing, okay. but um, I was not very happy. Mm. There was something inside me searching, like I said, and I was looking for something deeper. Mm. And it so happened that uh, the retreat that I attended here in 1993, mm. not because I wanted to, mm. uh, my father needed to come, so mm. I came with him. Mm. And so this is all God's plan because when I came here, mm. I felt very excited about something. Mm. A deep excitement uh, filled my heart and during the retreat I got my answers. Mm. So it wasn't a thing that I had to decide, mm. it just happened. God gave me a revelation which mm. opened my entire being mm. to the to what I had to do. When did you actually start <coughs> singing only gospel? Um, actually, I was asking the Lord also. Mm. When I came here for retreat, mm. in the counseling, mm. in my prayers, and in the counseling also, I was told, mm. when I asked, what do I do now? And then the counselor said, wait on the Lord, He will show you. Mm. So, um, we were going to Bahrain to do one of our shows. Mm. And so, after the retreat, it sparked off a spiritual uh, journey for me. I was also asking the Lord. I received some gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, I could see visions and, mm. and I could also hear the voice of the Lord. Okay. So, the Lord was telling me, this is going to be your last show. Mm. So, I didn't have to actually struggle. Mm. I was just following what God wanted. And that was giving me joy in my heart. So I, I, it was not difficult for me to leave because this is what I felt at that time was the right thing. Um, so in the retreat, mm. I learned a lot of things and also uh, what excited me was the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And what my friends had experienced, I began to also experience mm. the movement of the Spirit. Mm. So I could hear God speaking to me uh, in the time of prayer and also in time of deep meditation. And also, I began to be satisfied uh, with the knowledge I was receiving insights also when I was reading the Word of God. And it was giving me direction to make a choice. And So the choice was that you leave uh, secular and sing Lord God. told me this is going to be your last show. I was looking for, I was not very happy. Once I met the Lord, the world was, uh, the commercial music was totally um, uh, alien to me, like I was not satisfied with uh, the music that I was doing. But for someone who has been, you know, <clears throat> what to say, ingrained in the music so much, for him to leave and, you know, come is such a difficult decision. Right it was there. actually God's plan because the music I was involved in, like heavy metal, yeah. rock music, uh, I, I, I had a liking for this kind of music. All those wonderful, talented people who I would imitate, mm. I love them. Mm. I love their styles. Mm. And I incorporated these styles also into, for the Lord, uh, into uh, worship and praise mm. for the Lord. Okay. So that is when I understood God took me through that to also use it for His glory. It was like kind of a musical formation. Too. Yes. Yeah. So I could see, uh, see through everything and I knew this is what God had done. So, uh, Teresa, you came to Divine only after you, both of you got married? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, so so uh, the decision that you wanted to sing full-time and minister as a couple full-time, was it an individual decision or was it a decision that you took as a couple? What you're doing right now in Divine? Um, it just happened along the way. Okay. Because uh, I, I never even thought about full-time ministry. and it, mm. In fact, the, the only thing I asked the Lord is I want to get married to a carpenter. Because I was working <laughs> in a, you know, like a advertising firm where people were so creative. Okay. So I'm like, that's the only thing I asked. I mean, not that I really cared for carpentry, yeah. but uh, after we got married, like, you know, he showed me, he's showing me around his house and he opened one cupboard and said, these are my carpentry tools. Wow. <laughs> I've made this, I've uh, made this cupboard and I've made this, you know, that kind of thing. So that, that's about all I asked the Lord. And, mm. But there's one thing I told the Lord, I don't remember. I said, whatever I'm doing, whichever state, like thinking of my f life at that time, mm. so whatever I'm doing, mm. I want to be loving you, I said. Mm. And that was always the thing. Whatever I'm doing, whether I'm cooking in the house, I want to be loving you. Mm. So it doesn't matter what I do. Mm. So um, 
No, this was this came along. I said, why not? <laughs> Do you remember the first time when both of you ministered together as a couple? Yes, I, I remember it was in the Malayalam section, mm -hmm. and just we had stayed the night, and then the morning we had to get on stage. And I remember the water was cold. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> yes, the water is real cold. I'm like, okay, get you know, this is welcome to ministry. Yeah. Real cold water, and then later on when I look at it, it is like God was integrating my ministry, so called being on stage, to my life. Mm. So, or you know, everything. Powers the ministry. Mm. So the ministry is not like it's not a choco block. It's not a, a box on itself. You know, everything affects it. my my whole life mm. is meant to be a ministry. Sure. If that one hour of praise and worship should be really ministering to souls. Mm. So you know, I got an introduction to that. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you still have a memory of that. What was your yes? And we sang the song on the Trinity. Okay. Trinity, the Trinity can never be divided, never be, never can be split, mm. and uh, you know that that we are, we are we are always a community. I remember that song we sang, uh, thinking of a Trinity, like Trinity is always a community, and we're meant to be in a community, and we better learn to be in a community, mm. better lo uh, lo love in a community, make it a heaven kind of thing, mm. and um, so that that was a song we sang. Did you sing in Malayalam or English? English? We sang in English. Okay. So we had the English section in in the Malayalam section, and that was the only week. The next week we were coming here. So this uh, English campus, campus is as old as our marriage, okay. twenty two years down the line. So and Glenn, you know, the spousal relationship is so intimate, right? Like uh, I have not met many couples who minister together. So how is it? Like how different it is? Is it good or is it a? It's not anything we planned. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Uh, It's surprising sometimes. Yeah. People look at us and say, "Wow, yeah. ministering together." And mm. It's it's what God arranged, and um, we have a beautiful relationship. Mm. Um, it's it's like friends. In fact, I asked Teresa mm. before marriage, mm. "What are you looking in a husband?" And she said, "A brother." <laughs> 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 so basically, our relationship is in Christ, and so it's it's beautiful. Yeah. And and the sacramental grace that we receive. Um, when we get married, yes. yeah, the, church, the church offers the grace. Does it, you know, enhance the ministry that you do together? Of course, yes. We see the moment of the spirit, mm. and um, we can get along with each other so well. We we know each other. Mm. We know what to expect from each other. Mm. So obviously, it's a it's a comfortable relationship God has put together. Yeah. And mostly, God wanted us to be examples to others. Yeah. So wherever we go, we see we spark off this example of a couple ministry. Mm. So I think that is also one of God's greatest plans that mm. we are witnesses as a family. Mm. And we had a sticker behind our car also, mm. which says, "Me and my family. For me and my family, we will serve the Lord." Yeah, the Joshua. Joshua. Twenty fourteen. And uh, during the past 24 or 25 years, Teresa, was there a time that you thought, both of you thought together that you know we have done enough, we should stop ministering? Was it was there a challenging moment like that? So there was a time when um, my both of my sisters are in the states, yeah. and my parents also at that time. So they were uh, they were there, and also we did get a job offer in the U.S. Okay. So we thought maybe we could minister for some time, mm. and the job would be just be a you know it was something to do with software. Computers. So we did buy computer books. And we were training ourselves okay. for that. I have a computer background, so okay. yeah. Good. So we were invited by Teresa's sister. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Teresa's neighbor. Oh. So right. he has offices in the in the Twin Tower. Yeah. He's running all the software. Ooh. So he wanted someone who he could trust, and so he said, "You pick up these few C plus plus and all these things." So if you had gone, you would have been working in Twin Tower. I would be exactly. Wow. So that was the time that you thought it could you could go there. Yeah, you're okay. right, right. Yeah. As so what? Other because at that time, other people also were saying, "Why don't you minister in the states?" And you know, people were calling us, yeah. and you know, we had people who knew who who said, "Come on, why don't you come over?" Was yeah. there any other time when you thought this is enough? Was I mean, I'm just asking. Like, did you feel ever worn out by doing the ministry together for such a long time? So, in fact, uh, once when we were singing in a place called Bareilly, mm. so uh, the keyboard. Mm. Uh, suddenly stopped working, and we found the amplifier connected to that began to smoke. But suddenly, so everything connected to our sound system just stopped. And then, but the preacher's mic was all right and everything. And that was a village area, mm. like people with uh, making uh, cakes out of cow dung and things like. That. So no way in which you could get it repaired. It was a Sunday as well. Mm. So we remember we went with Father Matthew Nayakaparam and Sister Therese. Mm. So they were in the church, like you know, it's, it's a church adjoining. It was a retreat for. 
priests and nuns, mm -hmm. there was a bishop as well. Mm -hmm. So we just went over to them and we just prayed and we said, why is our, you know, this, this happening, you know, know, yeah. And uh, so they prayed mm -hmm. and what they said is, God, we had a business as well, mm -hmm. you know, software business and hardware business, mm -hmm. computer. So they prayed and said, God wants you to stop that. Okay, and go full time. So even though we were in the ministry many years, we had this business mm. side by side. Mm. They, they said they want to stop that. We should stop that. So suddenly we thought, okay, then how are we going to get the, you know, because we were volunteers, we were not taking money. Yeah. So uh, how are we going to buy the, you know, yeah, the food yourself, or yeah, yeah, take care of ourselves? And then, um, and then so we dilly dallied on that. We said, okay, okay, and all that. And once I remember we were going. After that, we went for a recording to mm. Thrissur. Mm. When we were coming back, we, we were coming back in our dad's mm. uh, ambassador car. Mm. Suddenly at 2 a.m. in the morning, this car started smoking. The, 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 black, the same thing that happened with the amplifier. Mm. And it was like as if God was twisting our arms and hey, are you doing what I'm trying to tell you to do? Mm. So we park in the side of the mm. highway and we're like, okay, we get it, we get it. Just give us some time, we, put, we need to put things together. And then when we went back to our office, Glenn actually saw, you know, one of the people who were working there, like, uh, they were like, the, the pune was at the secretary's uh, neck. Oh. And you can edit that, right? No. Yeah. So then uh, then we thought, okay, okay, you know, yeah. now was the time we, we, we stopped. Yeah. And we actually stopped. Yeah. But then when we stopped, yeah. we found all our bills that needed to be paid just got paid off the moment we stopped. Yeah. Our debts just got covered off. And... Um, we, I remember once they suddenly called us to go to Surat mm -hmm. and we were like, okay, um, Lord, if, if, and we had to pay a bill. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, if you want us to do your work, what about our bill? Mm -hmm. And I remember exactly the amount, like suppose the bill was 365, mm -hmm. okay, the, the amount to be paid. Mm -hmm. We got exactly 366, I think, just one rupee extra. Mm -hmm. So, we knew God was speaking, mm -hmm. that I'll take care of your mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. you take care of my business, which is salvation of souls. Mm -hmm. Glenn, actually, you know, mm -hmm. I want to follow up on that. So when I am doing whatever I am doing, so I was working and now I've come doing this full time. So a lot of people ask me, you're so foolish that, you know, you have to get settled, get married, take care of yourself. And then maybe in the future, think of, uh, you know, doing something like this. So when uh, Teresa uh, narrated the story, I'm thinking like, you know, as a couple, you would have thought, uh, you know, you would have thought of starting a family, being settled down, and that time God giving you this, you know, challenge to let go of everything and be full time, you know, go into full time. For us, it was more joy. Seriously? Yes, it was not a challenge in any way. I felt so uh, uh, good about whatever excitement. God wanted, there was an excitement within us. So mm. we knew, we didn't have to think twice. And God was faithful till today, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we are better off than when we would have worked yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the same thing happened to me. Like I was earning a certain amount. I'm, okay. uh, I'm what the min with the ministry that I'm doing, it, the expense is double of what I was earning, and I'm still mm -hmm. able to, you know, meet to the. Meet that expense. Yeah. So when God calls, He's generally yes, and always uh, faithful. He says, "My thoughts are not your thoughts. My yeah. ways are not your ways." So. Yeah. And could you also share about the experience that you had with the other two fathers, other than Father Augustine Waller and Father George? Manikal and uh, Father Matthew. Matthew. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, we were inspired by everyone has a different charisma. Mm. In fact, every priest or every person God has chosen has got a unique charisma. Mm. In fact, it's a beautiful combination of uh, Father Panikal, Father Matthew, Father Augustine also mm. uh, to lift this entire. Father Matthew is a spearhead. Mm. The the prayer warrior, as you would say, Prophet. who would sit and yeah, uh, and receive the messages mm. and from the Lord, mm. and it was being proved also over time that God's spirit is moving in him. Mm. Everything is like he is a surrendered man. Father Panikal is another surrendered man. Mm. His only aim is a lot of compassion of Christ is in him. Mm. So you can see him, the way he moves around, and mm. he is just lost in his love for God. Mm. So things were just happening. And uh, Father Augustine was uh, a more um, uh, a person who could relate to people, mm. and he had different skills. Mm. So others would look up to him mm. to handle uh, situations. So it was a beautiful combination. Yeah. And Teresa, when so you have travelled all over the world, and you know so many people, and when people come and appreciate you for what you're doing, you know, generally as human beings, we the pride comes into us. So how both of you have, you know. Uh, remained, you know, down to earth over the some years. 
I feel God knows the balancing act <laughs> where he makes you experience your nothingness, your misery. Very true. But on one hand, maybe, up, yeah. yeah, they're praising you for your talk. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, a, a, a slight a, a word out of place by, by somebody is enough to ruin your yeah. day. And like, how co then, then, you know, you're praising me for my talk, but I'm not even able to handle a word that was misplaced by somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you, you just, he just puts you in place. Mm -hmm. And then you're so thankful for that because you realize at the end of the day, you're dust and ashes. And that, that's where you, you need to recognize that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thank God for this growing distrust that I have for myself. Mm. and the growing trust I have on him. And mm. it's simply the work of the Lord. We're left to myself, you know, and it'd be like this balloon that was shot up mm. and burst somewhere up. <laughs> Would you uh, like to add to that, Glenn, about humility and... Yeah, in divine, actually what we have come to learn mm. is total dependence on God. Mm. Because suddenly uh, you are asked to go on stage and give a talk. Mm. So usually, normally we think we should prepare. Even if we prepare, we end up giving another talk. So even our worship started like that. Mm. Uh, I asked, Father said, um, why don't you go and do the praise and worship tomorrow morning? So I asked Father, what is praise and worship? He said, you just sing hymns mm. and share the word of God mm. and connect it mm. and the Spirit will lead you. So mm. it was, there's uh, on the job training. Yeah. And the last question, Teresa, in this uh, part of the interview. So, were you ever, you know, when you started ministering together as a couple, you know, with music ministry, were you ever intimidated by Glenn's, you know, talent of music? Or you just kind of coped up with it? Perhaps he had a way of, uh, you know, just accommodating me, mm. kind of thing. Because um, the first three years of singing together, uh, my effort was not to be heard in the mic. <laughs> I was trying every effort to, you know, to, to be there to open my mouth, as like they say, you know, if you don't know, just sing catty pillar, just sing. Yeah. You'll be good. <laughs> I, would, I would have done that. So, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm like, he bore me kind of thing, you know. Yeah. My, my you, inexperience. You know, I know yeah. Glenn is a perfectionist and you wanted music to be perfect. Uh, right, right. No, but right, one so. thing I, I could see, even when she began singing, there was harmony coming out. Mm. And people said, wow, it yeah. sounds good. So we could see. The power, even when we have, were singing in the choir, mm. we used to pray like this, Lord, send your angels to sing with us. Mm. And people would come and tell us, we heard mm. these voices. Mm. We have not sung those voices. Mm. They heard it. Mm. So we could see the Spirit of God, angels. So it was a ministry that the Lord was leading. Mm. So we just let Him use us. And I've also heard you speak for, I told you about the retreat which I attended. So personally for you, which is your favorite, singing or speaking, preaching? Um, it, it would be like um, the, the singing would be an expression of the, you know, what you're trying to convey as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it would be um, sometimes singing would tire you out because you're singing, you're standing up, you have to follow the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. And um, uh, preaching is more from the heart. Mm. So, you know, yeah. so you're then, there. Yeah. So Glenn, I, this is, these are the questions that I collected from the people who, when I said about the interview. So they generally want to know about the Catholic way of praise and worship. So if you could set the context, like what is worship? What happens to us, the person who is leading and also the audience who are being led? Yeah, it is basically what we have come across. Okay. Uh, I had no idea what praise and worship is. Mm. And over the period of our ministry, I began to see people do different things, different ways. Mm. So basically, we were also taught, we begin everything with praise. Mm. That opens the door of your heart to the knock of God. Yeah. So, and even Prophet Isaiah says, make praise your gate. So basically, that opens out. Mm. And then we go into, into an intimacy. Mm. So every praise and worship, even the Our Father Jesus teaches us, is all about beginning with praise. It opens a way and let your will be done, then the surrender. So basically, our Father was the format for our worship and praise. Mm. Begin with praise and we go into worship, mm. then we go into intercession, we go into deliverance, we go into... So basically, the prayer which Jesus taught us is what people uh, use also to form a format of uh, worship and praise. So some people say praise and worship, but uh, I came to understand praise is different, totally different from worship. Mm. Praise is what triggers everything, your desire for God. Mm. And then your connection comes in worship. Mm. So worship is more an intimate relationship where you enjoy the spirit mm. moving. Yeah. And uh, Teresa, you know, this is something, you know, a lot of Catholic people who are involved in music ministry, we kind of, you know, uh, see the model that you have set 
uh, for uh, uh, how Catholics should do praise and worship. So the way you compose, the way you sing, uh, it's so soothing and it's so smooth. So was it something which you worked on or something which happened naturally for you? Maybe what, uh, in a way, God fine-tuned. Okay. Yeah, because then um, if at one time maybe um, the Spirit was saying to avoid um, like a display, kind of a, a, a avoid, you know, like a outward display. Okay. Um, so, you know, you'd like to, the Spirit was kind of fine-tuning it around the way. Yeah. And um, also uh, who are, to ask this basic question, who am I actually doing it for? Mm -hmm. Am I doing it for Jesus or yeah. am I doing it for mm -hmm. my image? Am I doing it for the crowd? Mm -hmm. So all these things, you know, uh, slowly chipped away this side and that side, mm -hmm. and, you know, is, is on the process of being shaped, on yeah. being molded in fact. Yeah. yeah. And another thing, Glenn, you know, we spoke about this. What, what is, is so unique, unique about the Catholic way of praising worship, if you have to zero in on certain elements? Actually, Catholic uh, praise and worship formation was not there except for the charismatic renewal. Yeah. It's all about the Eucharist as the center, mm. the Holy Mass. Mm. That was the importance. Yeah. And then, of, of course, there are feast days where a lot of singing is there in yeah. church. So, that is as far as what a Catholic view of praise and worship was. Okay. It was a charismatic renewal which brought an awareness of spending time just to worship God, praise mm. Him mm. and connect to Him. Mm. So this was en enhancing and helping the mm. also Catholic uh, Church. So, the charismatic renewal moment was uh, like a support for the Catholic. That is when the real praise and worship, of, uh, mm. uh, what do you call it, um, uh, thing, thoughts it also came Catholic and took Christian. shape. Yeah. Mm. And uh, uh, Teresa, a lot of us involved in the music ministry have the struggle of, you know, whether to appeal to the emotion of the audience or really help them prepare their hearts for allowing the Holy Spirit to work in them. How do you, how do we make the balance of both? Um, I would say it is more of getting out of the way and letting the Spirit do. So mm. the more, uh, in, as John the Baptist said, less of me and, you know, I should decrease and he should increase. Mm. So am I getting in the way of the Holy Spirit from doing the job because evangelization is the work of the Spirit. The Spirit is, you know, mm. the agent of evangel evangelization. So even if I have the state-of-the-art technology, but if I, if I miss even the slightest inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you know, I don't have it. So uh, it's about yielding to the Spirit and as a worship leader, I'm also attentive to the leading of the Spirit because mm. the Spirit knows what they need. At any given point, they know, Spirit knows what they need. So, am I led by the Spirit in a way? So, you would say the most important thing for a praise and worship leader is to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. In tune with the Holy Spirit and yeah. uh, to be led moment by moment by uh, uh, our resident counselor who is the Holy Spirit. Mm. And Glenn, you know, uh, so a lot of people start off with music, ministering you know, at a very young age and that, that is also a time when they are actually overcoming all their struggles and sinful tendencies. So when they have all that and they are still coming to minister, like, you know, sometimes, you know, as Tracer said, they are not able to allow the Holy Spirit to work in them in their ministry. Mm. So what would you suggest and advise those young people? Like, you know, they are more so um, concentrating on working on the music and the singing mm. rather than their personal life. It's, it's, like, point of, uh, it's like people are looking more at the gift than the giver. Mm. So, talent is something we could get naturally. Mm. We can also develop a lot of sure. interest in music and train yourself to a certain extent. Yeah. So, for some it comes naturally. Mm. But basically the key factor is this. Mm. Do you love the shepherd? That is where the anointing comes. Mm. Do you love God? Is it for the glory of God? Exactly what Mother Teresa, which opened my entire view of uh, being present in this world also was, what are we here for? See, one thing I've learned right through these years, uh, the commercial music, okay, it's all about your glory. Uh, it's all about bringing out the best you can, uh, impressing others. But in, when I came to the Holy Spirit, I saw that was all uh, just artificial. This, when, uh, this is a, f a time when we, uh, we do it for His glory. Mm. That is where the Spirit moves. Mm. So the difference between the commercial music mm. and the anointed music mm. is where we give room for the Spirit to move. Mm. We are not full of ourselves. Mm. We allow the Spirit to move. Mm. Teresa, uh, uh, Glenn also yeah. can chime in on this. Uh, so you know that you know, in today's Catholic uh, 
fraternity of praise and worship, there is a lot of Protestant influence. You know, a lot of us learn the songs, Protestant yeah. songs, and the way we do praise and worship is also very much influenced by them. In its in itself, it's not a wrong thing for us to learn good things from them. But what would you, what would be your comment on that be? You know, their um, um, you know dedication to that to that ministry is something that we need to learn from. Yeah. Also, there's zeal for souls. Yeah. You know, we 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 see how they you know mm. um, go all out. Mm. You know, to make it uh, youthful for the youth, mm. and and you see a lot of youth gathering there. You know, they are just taken and they have a God experience. Mm. So, you know, their, um, the effort that they put in, mm. the sheer effort that they put in, mm. you know, to, to make it interesting, in every little, little thing counts. Yeah. So we can also take a greater effort, you know, in those lines. Because uh, many of these youth are, uh, you find them with the earphone, yeah. you know, they, they are connected with music. Yeah, sure. Okay, so at least through that, to get them closer to God. Mm. And what are the things that people, Catholics should be aware of or warned of in not, you know, kind of imbibing from what Protestants are doing? Interestingly, I've seen um, Protestants stick to a lot of these, uh, uh, what is related to, the people relate to, are related to. In fact, the, the times, the, the tunes and the, sure. uh, the beats music, and yeah. all that, the styles of music. So, uh, people can relate it and also connect to God easier. Otherwise, there's a rigid uh, structure in the formation of Catholic songs, I find. It's more like a chanting. Yeah. It's basically doesn't go out of the, you know, a very steady, monotonous mm. time. Goes up a little, comes down. It's, it's just, it doesn't flow. Mm. So the real flow in music I've seen is what we should learn from yeah. in the uh, Protestant's same. way of worship. Yeah. And this is what we have been also introducing into. Mm. I mean, the chants are much uh, higher level, you know, it takes people to attain yeah, that maturity to enjoy, you know, chants. Yeah. Right. In Would fact, there's say? one very interesting thing I came across. Yeah. Uh, it's like the, the Jews believed yeah. in the beginning there was no music. Okay. And so God asked his angels, this is what the traditional beliefs. So asked his angels, what should I do to enhance everything that yeah. I created? And they said, it would be wonderful if you had something through which your creation could communicate to you. And immediately God created music. So music also is defined as a subtle way of expressing a feeling or emotion which goes beyond the spoken word. So music is for communication. So that being said, uh, Teresa, so I think you would really encourage the Catholic uh, praise and worship leaders to really work on, uh, you know, how to express music in a way that it can actually reach out to their heart, would you not? Yes, with a lot of intercession in, the, in, in um, backing, sure. backing them, yeah. so they'll know exactly. Uh, so their their heart will be in the right place. Mm, okay. That's yeah. So they'll get to the heart of worship, yeah. which is God Himself. So the closer we are to Jesus, mm. the more fruit we will bear mm. of conversion. Yeah. Yeah. So my last question, Teresa, you can share first. Um, so in the last twenty-five years, which has been the most memorable moment for you in in your ministry? You know, when we were doing praise and worship together, mm. uh, you know, when we, we were just preparing them, you know, to worship. Is that an incident or it's... That's an incident, okay. yes, yes. So, you know, suddenly I heard the Holy Spirit telling me, he mm. said, um, you know, ask, ask who has a breathing problem. Mm. And I tell the Holy Spirit, no, don't tell me that now. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something else. I'm on to something else. Yeah. So again, I can hear this persuasive voice telling, ask, ask them who's, who's healed of a breathing problem, who, who had this issue. And I'm like, oh no, no, you really think I should do it now? Wait, wait, give me a break. I'll, some other time, I'll, we'll, we'll talk it out together. Again, a third time, ask now. And so I finally asked, you know, who had this breathing issue, breathing related problem? So there was this young girl, you know, who put her hand up. And then I just went on to the session. Then after that, she just came running and she said, she had just come after counseling and she had this breathing problem. Mm. You know, it was like a, um, a wheezing problem that she had. And she, she told the Lord that if you announce that my, you know, about this breathing problem, then I will believe in you. Oh. So then, <laughs> so that, that's the reason for was the persuasion. It, it was here in the English wow. section, yeah. Right. And Glenn, you know, in retrospect, looking back mm -hmm. the last 25 years, do you ever regret the decision that you took to sing only gospel? Never. I keep thanking the Lord for having chosen me to mm -hmm. be an instrument. Mm -hmm. And this is the greatest joy mm -hmm. and the best thing that ever happened to me. I always tell the Lord, Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Do you have a memorable moment? Uh, like Teresa shared also, we found music became a media mm. 
for healing too. Mm. When we would worship mm. and uh, the spirit will start moving, the same spirit. Mm. So the spirit shows us things mm. and also whispers things into our mind. Mm. So we began to ask people whether they got this healing, this healing, this healing, and they would confirm it. Mm. It started leading also us to greater mm. ministries. Uh, music is not everything for us. Mm. Uh, we have a great interest in preaching mm. the Word of God mm. and counseling is a wonderful experience. So, it's not just music mm. God called us to, it's just to be instruments mm. for His work. And I don't know if both of you remember, uh, many years back, you all came with Father Augustine Maloran to the Good Shepherd Grounds in Chennai yes. to do ministry. Yes. Yes. So, I was actually studying in school and my parents had brought me to that place and uh, there was a huge crowd of people actually you know, rushing towards a particular place and I asked my people, my relatives and they said, you know, Glenn and Teresa are there and they are all going to meet them. And I, I you know, that was my only um, remembrance of both of you. I've, of course, I've seen, I've heard people say, but I never thought, you know, God would give me an opportunity to come and interview both of you. So thank you so much for taking the time. It's, it's um, been a, such a honor and privilege. Thank you, Joseph, for yeah, yeah, we also spending time this as well. Yeah. Thank you, Joseph.